Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. We're playing e4 as per usual. Our opponent is going to respond with potentially e5, potentially c5. They go for knight to f6, Alakine's defense. We're going to play e5 here, and we are going to play something known as after c4, knight b6, and a4. If we see the move a5, we will be playing the Tate variation, named after Emery Tate, international master Emery Tate, who I believe coined this opening uh, in a game... I actually have a video on this opening, it's my only video with over a million views for obvious reasons, but there was a game Tate against Herfel where he played this move rook to a3 here. This outrageous fifth move rook lift after just pawn moves and then just a rook lift. Now in general, after d6 I think you take. Uh, I also made a tutorial on how to play this opening, which I will link in the description for any of you interested. I did make that a while ago though, and I'm currently not exactly sure if I remember it remember exactly what to do. I do remember the general ideas, which is that the rook pretty much wants to be on g3. And so I think I'm going to do that straight away. The reason the rook wants to be on g3 is because it's kind of unassailable here. Um, and we keep pressure on the g7 pawn such that you can't really move the bishop without hanging it. It's a very interesting opening. Uh, they go immediately for my c4 pawn. If I'm being honest, I think I might just play b3. Currently, this pawn is just hanging. And, I mean, I could play something like queen c2, and then the bishop and the queen defend it. I'm not exactly uh, extremely excited about the prospect of doing that. Although queen c2 could be nice, because we get this nice diagonal here, then maybe I go d4, bishop d3. Because the main idea is to go rook g3, and then d4 at some point. So queen c2 might make sense. I'm just wondering, maybe they do this past even i'm playing queen c2 okay they go knight to c6 here standard stuff just developing now i can't play d4 immediately because of course the knight holds this square oh and they're gonna come in like this why have i put my queen on c2 okay queen c2 is almost certainly just just a terrible move uh but oh well oh well i should probably just play b3 now anyway okay we're gonna play b3 Solidify this. I don't know why I play queen c2 first, but... No, they're just going to put the knight there. Or even there. And we're going to have to move the queen most likely back to d1, and that is going to be a huge waste of time. Okay, this is fine. We can recover from, from mistakes such as these. Whoa. They don't go knight b4? Okay. I mean, I'm assuming they will pretty soon. Maybe we could have played bishop a3 and actually stopped them from doing it. I mean, we've cut off one of these knight moves with knight to f3. Also, I just need to sort of expedite castling because, yeah, I, w I was not even close to castling. They castle queen. What? I played a4 on, like, move four. We've got this, this potentially advanced, you know, space claiming structure here already. Castling queenside is very interesting. But I guess they didn't want to castle kingside because of this very scary Tate variation style rook. Which could end up getting trapped because I don't really know how to play this opening properly. But oh well. I mean, honestly, bishop b2. And we're attacking this twice. And if you push, I'm going to take the rook. So what's the solution there? Bishop b2? Do you like push the pawn to f6 maybe? Or maybe I kind of want to play d4. Right, you know what? d4 it is. The point being, we're immediately threatening some kind of fork, although it's not really a fork because they can go knight before after or first uh, and just hit my queen. But I still want to play this and bishop e3 and take this and just trash the pawn structure in front of this king. The question is, where do I put my queen right now? The answer genuinely, I think, is just back to d1. I think it's safe there. I think it makes sense to be there. Bishop comes here. Okay, they're looking to go into c2. I might play knight a3 to defend that. I mean, why not? This this makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe even in the future we go out to b5. Let's block that check with the bishop and then castle. And once we've done that, I feel like we've solved quite a lot of the issues. Whoa, they... Wow. We can't take that because of this pin. That is unfortunate. So we are left with two legal moves, really. I mean, obviously, queen takes knight is not a good move. So... King f1? Do they take my, my dark squared bishop, maybe? Okay, we're gonna play... We're, we're gonna play king f1. 
I mean, maybe we go h3, king g1, king h2, and tuck the king in there. I don't know. This is very weird. But we'll, of course, recapture. We're not down any material yet, which is uh, not exactly a high bar, but it nonetheless is, it is a bar we've set. I do feel like if I can get my king relatively safe, if this rook was on this side of my king, I'd feel so good right now, just by playing like c5 and like bishop b5 and various ideas tearing open the king okay queen here take my bishop of course makes sense honestly guys i'm about to play the stupidest looking move knight back to g1 to hold the bishop to get out the way of my rook so i can play rook to e3 okay so they, they play d5 now i don't really understand why they play d5 i mean maybe they want to get the bishop here. I don't I don't really understand. I guess they're just breaking at this. What if I just push? Where's your knight actually going? We, we are just gonna push past here and just say, you know what, let me control some space. Now I'm gonna go rook to e3. An outrageous looking move. But I kind of think we've untangled everything. Oh boys, I'm saying the filthiest idea. Knight b5. And let's say they play a move like for instance, g6, trying to get the bishop out. Knight b5, g6. Knight d6, check. And if pawn takes, we play pawn takes here, discover check. Boys, knight to b5, look at this. Currently threatening knight d6, check. This is nice. This is all pinned up. Okay, I don't know how it's happened, but over the last couple of moves, I've got myself a very nice looking position. They sack the knight. Okay. Takes? Are they gonna play queen takes? My friend. Are you serious? The rook that went up to a3, across to g3, back to e3, and now back to c3. This insanely active piece that has hit every dark square on the third rank. Just. I mean, hello? This is just a lost game. They have to move the queen. I take on c7. Probably, right? Surely. I mean, it can't be a bad move to take on c7, but is it the best move? Maybe we, maybe we take here or something. I don't know. No, okay. Okay, we're, we're going to take on c7 because why not? Oh, I can probably sack a rook. I can probably sack a rook. Can I? Let's not even calculate. Let's not even calculate. Throw away the rook. Draw the king out. To then play queen c7. And then either of these moves, that is going to be checkmate. Oh, boys. This rook, the absolute rook a3, rook g3, rook e3, rook c3, rook c7, and now rook b7. We sacrifice the rook. Cue the Gotham chess shouting clip. And they just resign. They just resign. Because they know if they don't take, they're just finished anyway. Like here, here, and checkmate. I mean, let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. 86% accuracy with a blunder, which I'm almost certain was going to be queen c2. That was just a stupid move. I should have just played b3, I'm fairly sure. And three inaccuracies, which I'm just proud of. Um, this game is kind of, I mean, after our blunder, we we got to a you know a bit of a low point. Not completely lost. Yeah, was it queen c2? It was queen c2. We'll go through the game. Uh, but then we kind of built it back up. And then they really messed up. And then, uh, yeah, we finished it in style with the rook. So let's go through the game quickly. Okay, so e4, knight f6 is the Alakine defensive. e5, knight across c4, and knight to b6. Now here, the most common moves are going for d4, uh, or maybe even c5. You can do with this, like, chase variation with the knight. I believe it's called, is it called the chase variation? The Lasker variation. Okay, there's some, like, Fisher variation as well. A bunch of different variations. However, here, a4, and uh, you can see that... This is called the take variation now. This wasn't called the take variation before. I mean, I wonder, this could be a gross bit of arrogance on my part, but I wonder if this had anything to do with my video on it. Because that video, I think it's called Emery Tate Invented a Chess Opening, that has like 1.1 million views. It is by far my most uh, viewed video. It went a bit viral. Like it was referred to as the take variation in this book by Daim Shabazz um, called Triple X Glam. And I found that book and I read the bit of it and then did the study on the game and then presented it on YouTube. 
I think this, I mean, I wonder when they've decided to call this the Tay variation. This A4, I don't believe, is what I refer to as the Tay variation. A5 and Rook A3, this move here was, uh, was what I assumed the Tay variation to be. Wow, that's incredible because this wasn't the Tay variation before. Anyway, sorry, that's a big change because that is like my biggest video. This had line has a special place in my heart, of course. D6, takes, takes, and uh, Rook G3. I should have gone for D4 first. That makes sense, I guess, because then any of this and we just can play uh, D5. But we go across to G3. Uh, then, yeah, this was the obvious blunder. I mean, why why did I play Queen C2? It makes no sense. They can just go here and here. I should have just played this straight away, probably. I mean, maybe D4. Wait, I can play D4? Hold up. What? I can't just take this. Oh, no, because D5. I'm an idiot. But they can take it like this. Here, here. Oh, and then we just carry on developing and sack the pawn. Okay, B3 would have also been playable, I'd assume, although D5 apparently in win might be in a bit of trouble. Huh, interesting. Okay, this is a more delicate position than I realized, although, obviously. Uh, so, Queen C2, bad move, but then we start to redeem it. So, Knight F3, inaccurate, but completely fair. Uh, then D4, finally. Move the Queen back to D1. I think that was the best idea. Yeah, I believe so. Queen D1. And then, uh, yeah, Bishop here. Knight A3, pretty much the only move here. In fact, it is the only move to hold on to this square uh, successfully. Something like this just hangs a bishop, obviously. Uh, so the check. I went bishop e2 instead of bishop e3. I didn't even consider this bishop, actually. Uh, but they then gave the check. King f1, took the bishop, queen takes. Okay. Now, here we're not doing amazingly, according to the engine. However, somehow, knight g1 best move? That's nice, because I could have defended this with the queen. But knight g1 to play rook e3? After c5, knight back. Okay, once queen f4, knight b4. But rook e3 is also a very strong move. Hit the queen. They block with the bishop, pinning their own piece. We go knight to b5 here if they'd gone for something like this. Do I not have this move? I do, and if they take, we take here. And, uh, I mean, maybe this queen. Yeah, queen c7. The king moves. We can take this. The king moves again. We go check again. Just eventually we recapture. Uh, pick up the queen. That would have been obviously a nice little artistic way to end the game. If they had just moved the king, we could take the rook, of course. And uh, there would just an exchange of bishop g4, trade off some pieces and uh, win the game there. However, they sacked the knight, clearly very scared about this and trying to trade stuff off. Now, if I traded the queens off here, this becomes a lot harder to win. I mean, it's still winning. But it's not trivially winning. And I'm down on development. They have a bishop pair. Their king's kind of safe. Even if I go here, they can go like this probably. Oh no, they cannot because I would I I would, uh, I would fork the, the king and rook. But you see my point that if the queens come off the board, I'm not really threatening much anymore. The golden rook from the start of the game comes alive yet again to harass that queen. And then we can take it with check. The king moves. And then the very nice rook takes b7. Just demolition sacrifice. Taking out everything around the king and we can then sneak in with the queen king goes here and we'd have this checkmate this checkmate we'd also have some kind of oh that's disgusting okay i guess it's just gonna be queen b7 actually i thought we might have some like double checkmate but yeah we're gonna go here if you go here it's mate here and if you go here it's also mate here chasing the king and that rook the path that that rook took uh, to end up there went up to a3 across to g3 back to e3 to c3 to c7 and then to b7 that was only i mean wait the game ended on this move right 24 this was one two three four five six rook moves a quarter of the moves were with this one piece and we just absolutely wreaked havoc on the position with it thank you so much for watching not necessarily my finest work but nonetheless a very entertaining game hopefully uh, that knight on b5 certainly is quite nice also the move knight g1 was really satisfying i thought uh, and yeah, whenever you can play the uh, the Tate variation, I'm still baffled that it's now called the Tate variation in the Lee Chess database. Whoever actually did that, the, the Lee Chess team, probably because they watched my video, 100%, definitely not because of uh, any established published books like Triple X, Slam by Dime, Shabazz. Yeah, it's definitely because they watched my video. Anyway, I think they got it slightly wrong though, because it's not A4, it's A4, A5, Rook, A3. A4 is played like by other people. And that's kind of established, I think. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, as much feedback as possible in the comments. I really appreciate it. Consider becoming a channel member if you really enjoyed. And if you want personal chess coaching from me, then uh, sign up using the Google form. The link is in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.